Welcome back. Um, I will just uh, give you a short uh, introduction to uh, to what happens after the um, the, the lithographic process uh, in terms of uh, processing steps and also uh, characterization that we can do. So here we go. Um, typically what we want to do after lithography is that we want to transfer the pattern that we have in the resist into the substrate. So there are different ways this is, this is done. Uh, a typical one is etching. Um, so uh, we transfer the pattern of, uh, of the resist into either directly into the substrate or into a layer that we have on top of our substrate which has to work as a hard mask in a, in a, in a subsequent process. Um, we can use wet or dry etching, so uh, wet etching with a, with a liquid chemical or dry etching with, uh, with gases and, and, and plasma. Um, if we have a scumming uh, at this point, we would get some micro, mask, mark, micro masking, which uh, would give us roughness in the, uh, in the etched areas, as you see in, in, the, in the picture there. Um, another thing that can be done directly after lithography is electroplating, where we use the resist as a, as a mask for the growth of a, typically a metal film. Um, uh, one thing that we, uh, that we need in order for this to work is a conductive substrate or typically a, a seed layer. Um, and if we have uh, scumming in, in this case, we would get some kind of, uh, of partial uh, film growth. So it just inhibits the, uh, the, the, uh, the reaction on the, on the surface. Uh, the third thing that we can do directly after lithography is uh, iron implantation. So this is where we selectively dope uh, in the open areas with the, with the, with the use of, of accelerated ions. Um, and uh, this is not a process that we have available at Denchip. Um, but uh, if it's necessary, we can, we can ship wafers and have it done elsewhere. Um, and in that case, scumming probably doesn't have any effect because the, the high energy ions would probably go directly through. Okay. Uh, another thing that uh, is typically done after lithography uh, is liftoff of uh, typically of metal films. So this is a process where um, you put a thin film uh, of, of your desired material on top of the, on top of the substrate with the, uh, with the resist pattern. Um, and um, one thing which is, is, is best to have when you do this uh, uh, liftoff is that you have a non-conformal coating uh, of, the, of the thin film so that there is no, um, so that there is no um, deposition of material here on the sidewall of the, of the resist. And um, so, so after this deposition on top of the resist, we then put the, the substrate into a solvent bath, which dissolves the resist and allows everything that was deposited on top of the resist to float away while the, uh, the pattern uh, metal that, that we want remains on the substrate. So this is, has the best result if we have negative sidewalls. So we typically use the non-bleaching negative photoresist to, uh, to do this because that means that, the, that there is like an overhang on the resist which shadows the, the, the sidewall from being coated and that means we can get a very effective uh, liftoff process. If we would have uh, uh, scumming at this point, uh, that would lead to poor adhesion of the film. And uh, if the film was there to, to establish some kind of contact to the substrate, it would also uh, affect the, 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 uh, the electrical contact. Uh, the method that we use is a, a solvent and some ultrasonic agitation to, uh, to speed up the process. Um, so, there is some post-processing that we can do after the lithography um, 
like uh, DSCOM in this case here, which is what we do before the pattern transfer. So this is in order to get rid of the scumming. Uh, there is uh, the, the most uh, normal method is plasma ashing. So this is uh, typically an oxygen plasma because this will effectively remove uh, the organic uh, resist uh, residues on the uh, on the on the substrate. Uh, so low power and short time, something that has to be uh, controlled because we want to get rid of the scumming, but we don't want to damage the resist layer. Uh, another uh, possible way, if you have a silicon substrate, is that we can use hydrofluoric acid to uh, effectively, well, we, we, we sort of etch away the, the native oxide on the, on the, on the exposed part of the, of the substrate, and this effectively lifts off all the scumming because it's just under etched by the, by the acid and, and floats out into the bath. But this is something that, that is, is very specific to silicon processing. Uh, another thing that can be done after the lithography is the hard bake. So this is what we do again before the pattern transfer. So typically before a, a wet edge because what we want to do or a, or a dry edge if we want to increase the, the stability of the resist uh, um, and in some cases we can actually also use a hard bake to increase the adhesion of the resist to the substrate. It's baking at, uh, at temperatures that are slightly elevated compared to the soft bake temperatures, so typically up to 150 degrees for, for uh, some minutes in order to, uh, to harden uh, the resist. And then, of course, after the pattern transfer, we need to get rid of whatever resist is left uh, on the surface uh, before we continue with the next step in our, in our, uh, in our process. Uh, and um, there are two methods, either plasma ashing at high power and, and long time, or a solvent, uh, solvent bath with the ultrasonic agitation to dissolve the, the remaining resist. So, um, when we have our lithography finished, or actually also some, in some cases through, uh, during the process, we may want to characterize uh, what we have. So, uh, we can use different methods. Uh, the first one here is a, 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 an equipment that can measure the film thickness. So, this is an ellipsometer or a refractometer. And this basically uh, can measure the, the thickness of a film. So this is something that we could do, uh, for instance, after spin coating to figure out how, uh, how thick the resist is. Um, so this, this is something we do for, uh, in, in lithography. We use it to uh, investigate the coating thickness and also the coating uniformity. Uh, of course, we can also do uh, mechanical, uh, or well, not, not necessarily only mechanical, but, but profilometry, which can be a, a, a measurement where we have a mechanical stylus going across the surface to measure the height differences. And it can also be done uh, uh, in, a, in an optical microscope. So again, this is film thickness. It uh, can also be used to measure the pattern dimensions. So this is something, well, we need some kind of a step. We need, we need a clear, something cleared down to the substrate before we can do this. So, uh, so this is typically done after development and can be used to, to characterize the thickness of the film and also the size of, of our pattern. So this is uh, for, for, uh, for checking our, our results uh, after lithography. And if we uh, go down in size, like uh, if it was for e-beam lithography, we may need to use, uh, a, a, to have a better resolution than the, than the optical profiler. So we can use atomic force microscopy as well. Um, then there's the imaging methods that we can use. Optical microscopy, of course, is, uh, is very much used in, uh, in lithography to uh, look at the result after development to see if everything is okay and to check that the size of our pattern is correct. 
Uh, so again, for, uh, for checking the, the pattern and documenting our results. Uh, and if we want to go into higher precision or, or uh, for instance, if we wanted to look at the resist profile, we could use scanning electron microscopy. Um, and uh, there is actually uh, another tool package training coming up, which will uh, cover the, uh, the, the um, uh, scanning electron microscopy. Uh, we will have a look at uh, optical microscopy when we're done uh, in the practical part. So there is a short introduction to, uh, to the microscope there.